Very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Monday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It is the 20th of January, a big day on the other side of the Atlantic. It's the inauguration of uh, President uh, Trump and we have got the coldest inauguration in some 40 years for this part of the world and it's all thanks to an Arctic air mass, a lobe of the uh, polar vortex within the troposphere is driving south over North America. These were the temperatures earlier this morning, minus 41, minus 42 Celsius on the thermometer over central Ontario. And we had temperatures into the minus 30s uh, into parts of northern uh, North Dakota, Minnesota, and even into northern Iowa um, as well. Um, Wisconsin, actually, sorry, not Iowa. But uh, yeah, bitterly cold conditions. Uh, when you factor in the wind chill, we are talking about temperatures into the minus 50s in real feel uh, across parts of Ontario. We had that across other parts of uh, central Canada in recent hours as well. And uh, it looks as if this is the current temperatures according to weather, uh, weather online. And you can see that we've got temperatures in Fahrenheit, minus 27 currently in, in International Falls. We've got uh, minus 11 at uh, Minneapolis-St. Paul, minus 3 in Western uh, Illinois, but even down across parts of uh, the mid south, we've got the uh, uh, single figures in a few spots over uh, Kentucky and Tennessee, and the uh, upper teens in North Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. And what we've got is an interesting system. Now, I know this is the European outlook. Um, we will look at the, the details with regards to what is now storm warnings issued. Well, wind warnings have been now issued by the Met Office for Friday and into Saturday. So we'll look at that in, in a little second. We're also going to look at the possibility for some snow prospects as well. But you can see this graphic here from ABC7 News uh, that this is the coldest inauguration since uh, Reagan 1985. It's the first time in 40 years that they, all the um, all the, the palava has been moved indoors due to the cold. But there's obviously a few hundred thousand people exposed to the temperatures, which are generally in the low 20s at the moment, factor in wind chill. And you've got the real field temperatures in the DC area in the uh, upper single figures, low teens, um, due to the, the winds blowing, even a 10, 15 mile per hour wind blowing with 19 to 21 Celsius uh, or 21 Fahrenheit, or I'll get there in the end. Uh, you've got the, some real bitterly cold wind chills as a consequence. But we do have interesting things going on. We've got the thickness values uh, below 500. Uh, over north central portions of the United States, that is indicative of bitterly cold Arctic air. When you've got the thickness values that drop into the kind of nine, nine ninety, uh, four ninety two, four eighty six height lines, you've generally got a uh, bona fide bitterly cold Arctic air. The troposphere is shrunk, and you've got the um, the thicknesses about as low as what you can get really in North America when you've got this type of air mass descended. This actual air mass originated in, uh, in Siberia, but we've had cross polar flow due to the, uh, the vertically stacked polar vortex structure, the stretched out nature of it. We've had winds transporting Siberian air across the top and into North America, and that's going to continue to drive southwards throughout the next several days. And you can see here uh, off the GFS model, we've got the, this system develops right along the Texas Gulf Coast. We've got rain offshore, we've got ice right along the coast, and there's a mix of uh, wintry precipitation here. So ice, freezing rain, obviously, uh, which is particularly problematic, and then you could have uh, freezing rain changing over to snow as the system then moves along the Gulf Coast. But we've got actually a system here that uh, is uh, reasonably rare, especially down across the Gulf Coast. It's not every day that you get winter warnings uh, in Florida, and it looks like, according to Matt uh, Devitt, of a wink weather showing that we've got the first winter storm alerts so both winter storm warning and winter storm watch for north florida encompassing the majority of north florida with the exceptions of a uh, the northeast coast around the jacksonville area down through titusville towards daytona beach we don't have any uh, winter warnings here but further west anywhere from gainesville up towards the georgia and the alabama state lines we've got a winter uh, storm watch in effect and uh, there is actually a projection of upwards of four inches of snow expected. Uh, Pensacola looks like three inches. 
Destin on the uh, on the coast, we've got three inches. Then once you get a little bit further inland into Niceville, Milton, Century, Laurel Hill, we've got the, as much as four inches of snow projected. Uh, this is the first time in, in, in 10, 11 years, in fact, that we've uh, got the winter uh, storm watch issued for northern Florida, which is quite interesting. And like I say, expected to see one to four inches of snow in this region over the next 24 hours or so. Then that system then moves up the coast. We're going to see a, a wintry mix right along the immediate coast and then uh, it pushes off uh, shore and then you've got thickness values dropping uh, as, and, and kind of dropping as far down as uh, the, the northern sides of North uh, New York City as we move towards the Saturday time frame. So this is 12Z Saturday coming up. We've got thickness values down to uh, what 528 all the way in the northern portions of North Carolina. So we're going to see the coldest air likely towards late week and the end of the early portions of this weekend as high pressure builds in. We start to see the winds dropping off. We've got a nice cover and a snow anywhere from potentially North Florida all the way up to the Canadian Maritimes here. And when you've got that settled Arctic air mass building in over the top, you're going to have some particularly cold temperatures as a consequence. So while it's cold now, it's likely to get even colder towards the end of the week and into the uh, into the weekend. This is the temperatures uh, anomalies of the GFS. We're now moving over to the European side of the Atlantic, given the fact that it is a European outlook. And you can see here that uh, as we progress through the course of this week, so it's a fairly quiet start to the work week. It's going to be a very different end of the work week as we've got a system that moves close to the UK, bringing severe gales, potential for wind, rain, snow, and all sorts of hazards. But also we're going to start to see colder air getting driven off North America, crosses over the Atlantic. Granted, it does weaken as that air mass is cross, crosses over the relative warmth of the Atlantic. But we are going to see uh, the temperatures coming down. And as a consequence of that, we could see some snow, particularly over high ground. But uh, at the moment, we'll, we'll focus generally on the high ground uh, nature of the snow. But this is uh, quite a nice little graphic here from uh, Ventusky showing the air mass difference between both sides of the Atlantic. So we've got plus 10 Celsius at 850 over the over the, you know a, a chunk of Europe while we've got minus 30 uh, um, within the central portion of North America. So these are the 850 temperatures or temperatures at roughly 5,000 feet above our heads. Very contrasting air masses both sides of the Atlantic. But what's going to happen is some of this minus 30 Celsius air at 850 is going to get transported eastwards via a close to 280 mile per hour jet stream. We're going to see areas of low pressure. In fact, those lows that are developing along the, the US Gulf Coast, moving up the East Coast, what that's going to do is that system is going to get driven and propelled eastwards uh, via uh, the, that powerful jet and then affect the UK with wind, rain, and likely high elevation snowfall as we progress through the course of late week. So this is off the ECMWF. We'll look at the GFS in a second in terms of snow prospects. Even by 15 UTC tomorrow, the model is indicating some snow uh, across parts of northern uh, Scotland, for example. And then as we move towards the Thursday into Friday, we've got the, a swath of snow for parts of the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, and the uh, parts of Scotland as well. Um, it doesn't really hold out on particularly long, but they, certainly this is an interesting one. Friday, uh, 09 UTC, uh, the modeling is printing out a reasonable uh, snow uh, covering, but uh, it's transient probably in nature. Looking at the GFS model, you can see here that the, I'll play through the loop. It doesn't really indicate any snow Tuesday, Wednesday like the ECMWF does. So obviously we've got this fluctuation in the modeling depending on some of the details. And again, like the ECMWF, it's printing out some snow parts of the Republic, Northern Ireland, Northern England, and uh, Scotland as this system, and it's colder with basically recycled Canadian air is going to affect the northern side of the UK, and uh, we've got even a swath of snow showing up across parts of uh, Wales, the Midlands, Southern Ireland, as we move towards the latter half of the weekend, probably colder air wrapping in on the backside of that low. So anyway, let's have a look at the details with regards to the low itself. This is the overview chart. Like I say, there's early warnings now um, up 
for Friday in the Saturday off the Met Office for a wind. We're going to be interested to see if there's any uh, amber warnings or even potential for red warnings issued later on this week as a new model runs come out uh, and some of the details become a little bit more finer tuned. But you see the cold air getting drafted across the North Atlantic and it's in between these two competing air masses that you've got that powerful jet. So this area of low pressure is really interesting. You notice here that we've got heavy precip south and east side. On the north side, we've got the, the snowfall here. So this is a system that is going to be really rapidly deepening. If we look at the 850s here, you can see the contrast in temperature. Look at that squeeze between minus 10 and plus 10 Celsius. Very, very close together. And that area of low pressure is right under the nose of that powerful jet racing above it at around 280 miles per hour. Back to the overview chart of the GFS, you can see here that we'll play through. Frontal system initially moves through. That's actually bringing in some slightly colder air, so that may uh, set the stage with colder air in place as that moisture then runs into it. We're gonna see snow breaking out. Again, a lot of the details remain very um, un uncertain at this moment in time, but the latest run of the GFS has a system not that far, probably 100 miles to the northwest of both Ireland and Northern Ireland at 9.33 millibars, according to this very latest run of the GFS model. Squeeze and isobar, severe gales, very likely. Exactly how strong these winds are going to be still remains open to question, but we'll visit that in just a second. But you can see here, 9.35 millibars, just off the west coast of Scotland. This is on Friday, 15 UTC. We've had the main band of heavy wind-driven rain sweeping across both Ireland and UK. Then we have the strongest core of winds then moving in on the southern flank and eastern flank of that low. So let's zo zoom in on the UK specifically and see what it's indicating real quick. So uh, this is for uh, the UK view. And let's have a look at the wind speeds. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what it's indicating in terms of wind strength. So let's look at maximum gust, play it through till the end of the week. Uh, so we've got then 187 kilometers per hour showing up. Doesn't look as if it's rising much further than that, but really up along that mid-Atlantic coast of Ireland, some of those darker colors indicating 154 to 178 kilometers per hour. What does that constitute in terms of the uh, conversion? Sorry, I should have had this up already. 187 that's, that's meters per second, so that's going to miles per hour. 187 is 116 miles per hour, according to the latest run of the GFS model here. So I would be, personally, I would be quite surprised if this isn't named. Let's have a look and see what the, uh, the ECMWF model is looking at. Let's go back to the bigger, broader picture and see what the, that model is indicating. So again, all the same dynamics as the GFS. We've got the tight gradient, we've got the strong jet stream. And yeah, 9, uh, 933, 934 millibars, 935, 939 millibars. By the time we reach 18 UTC on Friday coming up. Again, GFS, now the ECMWF is indicating that we've got um, pressure into the 930s and millibars here now sometimes the modeling does back off a little bit in terms of the depth of low but nevertheless this is very interesting stuff let's look at the a close-up view and in terms of wind speeds so again let's go to the late friday if i just showed you the exact same model i think i actually have i beg your pardon let's go to the ecmwf uh, I'm getting myself slightly confused here. I do apologize for that. So this is uh, off the ECMWF showing 941, 944 millibars just off the West Coast, basically between the Outer Hebrides and mainland Scotland here at 944 millibars. That's not too shabby of a low for sure. Let's look at the wind gusts and see what they are indicating here. So you've obviously got the strongest winds probably in excess of 100 miles per hour quite comfortably. It's actually showing 207 kilometers per hour, but notice it's well offshore. 
and then the core strongest winds again like the GFS battering that mid-Atlantic coast of Ireland at the 180 let's see here real quick 180 kilometers per hour is 111 207 is a crazy 128 miles per hour but again like I say it's offshore but we could see wind um wave heights of 50 plus feet generated from these strong winds would not be surprising in the slightest so the gfs more bullish than the ecm but nevertheless the ecm still has pressure at 944 millibars pretty much as that center comes ashore somewhere up towards old pool or look inver by friday afternoon well i showed you the, the the temperatures and the anomalies we've showed the uh the snow potential as well in terms of rainfall, let's have a quick look and then we'll end at that because I think I've covered quite a lot. You can see here by the time we reach the end of Sunday, again, those waste, no surprise here, west facing parts of Ireland and the UK is going to see uh, rainfall totals in excess of perhaps, what, 50, 60 uh, millimetres. Uh, nothing huge, if you notice here, seen by the ECM. Let's have a look at the GFS model and see what it's indicating in terms of rainfall totals. And by the way, this is so this is the GFS as of 12 UTC on Monday. Again, kind of 40, 50, some local 70, 80 millimeters, probably over higher parts of uh, Southwest England, Wales, Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland. Kind of the general suspect areas when you've got a very powerful west southwest wind blowing. So it's going to be interesting. Very, very busy week coming up here. So if you haven't already done so, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you have not missed out on any uploads. But uh, we're going to look at the, at the US weather. I'm going to probably do a separate video. I also may, I haven't made up my mind properly yet, there may be a late live stream sometime Wednesday or Thursday evening this week, by the way. And it's going to be specifically looking at the US in terms of the cold, snow. Did we see that day uh, two, four inches of snow in in North Florida, for example, but what kind of snow are we seeing uh, down towards the Galveston, Houston area, coastal areas of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida? We're going to look at that in a little bit more detail. It's going to be an interesting week here on the channel. So if you're watching from the US or Canada, for example, we're going to be talking about the cold and the snow over the course of this week. So stay tuned for that. And like I said, there may be a live stream late a Wednesday or Thursday this week, so stay tuned for that as well. Hope you enjoyed today's content. Enjoy the rest of your Monday, and I'll see you tomorrow with more. Bye for now.